In this video, we will discuss inverse elements. Let capital S be a set with a binary operation dot from S cross S to S, and suppose that E is the identity element with respect to dot. Furthermore, let little s be any element of the set capital S. If there exists an element t in the set S, such that s dot t equals e and t dot s equals e, then we say that t is an inverse of s, and we denote t by the following. There are a few important notes to make about this notation. The first is that the negative 1 is not a power, but is rather a notation that we use specifically to denote an inverse. Finally, we subscript the negative 1 with the symbol for the binary operation in question. A final note is that we said in the definition that if such an element t exists, it is an inverse of the element s. However, we only use the s inverse notation when this element t is unique. Now we will discuss a few remarks about the inverse in general. The first remark is that if any arbitrary element, little s in the set capital S, has an inverse, then there must exist a binary operation dot for which s has an identity element e. However, even if the set s has such an identity element e, it is not the case that every element little s in the set capital S has an inverse. In other words, an identity element E must exist in order for inverse elements to exist. However, even if such an identity element does exist, not every element of the set capital S is guaranteed to have an inverse. For example, consider the set Z minus 0, which is the set of all integers except for 0. For this set, the element 1 is the identity element with respect to the operation of multiplication. However, for any integer a in this set that is not equal to the identity element 1, there is no integer b for which a times b or b times a equals 1. This is an example for which an identity element does exist, but no inverse elements exist. Now, consider the regular integers under the operation of addition. For the integers under addition, the element 0 is the identity element, which we call the additive identity. Given any integer a, we see that its opposite element, which we call negative a, is also an integer, and gives us the additive identity under the operation of addition. Thus, given any integer a, we say that negative a is its additive inverse under the operation of addition. There are several important theorems related to inverses, which we will discuss here without proof. The first theorem is related to the uniqueness of the inverse. Let s be a set with a binary operation dot from s cross s to s, such that dot is associative. If little s in the set capital S has an inverse, then that inverse is unique. This theorem does not state that every element little s in the set capital S has an inverse, only that if such an inverse element does exist, then it is unique. The second theorem concerns the inverse of the identity. Let s be a set with a binary operation dot from s cross s to s, with identity element e. Then, e inverse equals e. In other words, the identity element with respect to a certain binary operation dot is its own inverse. The third theorem confirms the relationship between an element s and its inverse. Let capital S be a set with a binary operation dot from s cross s to s and suppose that the element little s in the set capital S has an inverse element denoted s inverse. Then the inverse of s inverse is equal to the element s itself. In other words, the elements s and s inverse are inverses of each other. To conclude, we will present several sets and state whether or not inverse elements exist under specific operations. The first example is the natural numbers under the operation of addition. 
recall that the natural numbers do not contain zero, and zero is the additive identity. We mentioned previously that if a set does not contain an identity element, then its elements cannot have inverses. Since the natural numbers do not contain the additive identity zero, the elements of the natural numbers do not have inverses. Let's consider the set of natural numbers again, only this time under the operation of multiplication. The element 1 is the multiplicative identity, and the natural numbers do contain the element 1. However, the only natural number that has an inverse is 1 itself. Any natural number greater than 1 does not have a multiplicative inverse in the set of natural numbers. For example, suppose we wanted to find the multiplicative inverse for the natural number 2. For an inverse to exist, we would need to find a natural number t such that t times 2 equals 1 and 2 times t equals 1. The only number t that satisfies both of these equations is the number t equals 1 half, which is not a natural number. Remember that inverse elements must also be a member of the set where the original element is found. Since 1 half is not a natural number, it is not an inverse for the natural number 2. No inverses exist for any natural number greater than 1, and this also holds for the entire set of integers under multiplication. The only integer that has a multiplicative inverse is 1, the multiplicative identity. Now consider the set z mod 5 under the operation of addition. The additive identity is the element 0, and 0 is included in the set z mod 5. Since z mod 5 does contain an identity element with respect to addition, additive inverses may exist for the elements of z mod 5. In fact, every element of z mod 5 has an additive inverse. The additive inverse of 0 is itself. The additive inverse of 1 is 4, and vice versa. And the additive inverse of 2 is 3, and vice versa. Finally, let's consider the set z mod 5 without 0 under the operation of multiplication. The element 1 is the multiplicative identity, and 1 is included in z mod 5 without 0. In this set, the elements 1 and 4 are their own multiplicative inverses. That is, 1 is its own multiplicative inverse, and 4 is its own multiplicative inverse. Finally, the element 2 is the multiplicative inverse of 3, and vice versa.